Well, hello, everybody. It's Dr. Hank, and welcome, welcome. Today, we are uh, going under the umbrella, if you will, of health, wealth, and success. And in fact, I just published my 14th book, Health, Wealth, and Success. And that has a lot to do with the Line Strategy Group, which is just a wonderful group that helps first responders. And um, uh, But this one, you're going to really today, you are going to be enlightened. You're going to have a better understanding of life and um, a better understanding of kind of the things that you have been happening with you that you're going to get some clarity around it. And I want to introduce you to Pamela Mace. And Pamela, welcome so much to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and you're much better looking than I am, by the way. <laughs> so we thank you for blessing blessing the show and uh, and making it even more beautiful than it already was. <laughs> and uh, wow, I've heard just so much about you, and and uh, and you have uh, just been amazing, and and just a little background of of uh, with you that you know you have some amazing, remarkable. Um, uh, businesses and today as usual we're not selling anything we are just offering good information to uplift the whole world and you are such a blessing but I love on um, part of your story is if you will is um, you got divorced in 2017 so about three years ago and at that time uh, during that you know what most people call a tragedy and something awful and ha even though half the America does it that um, you know it's not a fun thing to go uh, through but what I love about you is that you had a grand awakening because of that and that's why everything folks that we go through is a blessing for us and so you started to search and you started to scour the internet and started to ask for answers and all the information that you could get on whether it be light workers or which both of us are and wanderers second waivers star seeds a whole bunch of different things but what you were able to attract into your experience and your consciousness was something called and i would recommend you all write this down one of one ra ra material and there's uh i think there's four books out on it that i'm aware of but um pamela can you tell us about what is this one of one and why is this going to help us to kind of sort through life and have more clarity and to be happier and all the wonderful things that we desire to come to us yeah, like I, I did have a traumatic experience going through a divorce. And it's usually a traumatic experience that can awaken you when you actually uh, really quiet yourself and look within. And that's what happened to me. And it actually first started with uh, Dolores Cannon's work for me about finding out um, where my place is in the universe type thing. Of, mm -hmm. uh, like really who I was and what I'm here for and what mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be doing. And when I had that awakening... Uh, I started searching and I found the law of one raw material mm -hmm. and I started listening to it and it was just, it was so eye opening because this was a channeling work that was done in the eighties. Now in the eighties, it was still very new age still to do something like channeling and right. they were just channeling, you know, grandpa from, you know, 50 years ago, they were channeling a, a sixth dimensional being named Ra. And Ra is a very interesting uh, character. So for some of your audience, and I'm sure a lot of them know because you've done channeling as well, yeah. channeling is opening up a door to the cosmos and it's an open door and anyone can walk in. But if you get really um, kind of good at it and practice it, you're able to channel the same entity over and over again and get this long, um, you know, almost relationship with it. And that's what these uh, three people did. There was, uh, there were scientists. They, they really wanted answers to the, to the world and to the universe. And when they found and connected with Ra, it wasn't an accident. Um, it was meant to uh, happen exactly when it happened. And even though it was done in the 80s, it was decades later until really this information 
is heading mainstream um, and wow. everybody is going through grand awakenings over and over and over again during this time. Wow. And it does talk about why that is. And um, so it's just not an accident that this information is available to us, but it is kind of complex. And it, um, because we have something very important and Ra talks about that, is that in this universe, in our reality, there are certain laws that govern it. And one of the laws is um, you, they can't interfere. You have to yeah. feel here mm -hmm. and uh, you have to abide by that law mm -hmm. and everyone does. And right. so when they want to get information out of Ra, Ra just can't volunteer it because that's impinging on our free will. But yeah. if they ask a question and if it doesn't impinge on that uh, free will, uh, Ra will answer it. And so yeah. some of these um, questions that these scientists were asking can be complex and it's just so eye-opening and I just drank it up. And then during that awakening, I started getting such, um, call them just downloads. And I started just tapping into the Akashic records to broaden my understanding of it. And, mm -hmm. and it just happened really fast for me. And when I started you know, trying to explain it to family members and other people, um, they would listen to the raw tapes and they couldn't really understand what was going on. But mm -hmm. then I talked about it and they're like, oh, that makes sense. And I'm started, I started thinking, you know, I need to help get this, you know, guidance. And I needed just to help people try to understand this. And because I consider, well, raw talks about wanderers. And I always consider myself a second waiter because that's what Dolores Cannon calls us. And, um, and what's away. the definition of that? What's that? The definition of that? Of a wanderer? <laughs> uh, well, first way, uh, didn't you say uh, a first waiver? It There's was... first waivers and second waivers and third waivers. According, that's how Dolores Cannon um, categorized it. And Rogers called them all wanderers. Kind of. Ah, got it. And, and yeah. so, yeah, what's the definition of that? Well, um, if you look at um, somewhat of the souls that are here and everyone that's here right now that um, grew up almost with the planet through the through the ages, you know, the people that are from here mm -hmm. and are going through all the densities and expansion of their souls here mm -hmm. are the people from here. But there are entities and, and beings on in other times, which is kind of mind bottling because time doesn't exist in certain realms right. and also on other planets. That's why some of them are called. Uh, star seeds, uh, some of them are completely from different dimensions and they've wandered over here. They've come over here to be here during this time because um, during this time on the planet right now, we're moving from um, third density to fourth. And yeah. that's a major, um, and not only is it that transition that we're going through right now, but it was also kind of like the 11th hour of whether we would be uh, polarizing to service to others and service to self. Mm -hmm. So we we're just moving through one density to another like we have before. This was monumental about what would, how this planet would continue. And mm -hmm. it almost got split um, of whether it's service to self or service to others. So a lot of wanderers, star seed, light workers, like we were kind of all coming in to do that final push. Wow. Um, Sure we what are they pushing for? Which side are they pushing for? Self or other? <laughs> uh, we're all pushing uh, towards service to others. Uh, yeah. There aren't a lot of wanderers or sea workers that are service to self because um, in 3D, we are behind this ve this veil of forgetting. You forget who you are when you come here. Mm -hmm. And um, all wanderers and star seas, we're all hoping to kind of remember who we are and go through an awakening while we're here to uh, expand and aid even more. So it's just a little too risky for um, service to others to come here under the veil because they might lose their polarity while they're here. So I would say the majority of all light workers and wanderers and waivers, they're all polarized service to others. And uh, I'm here not only to witness uh, and be part of it, but to help because, um, you know, Earth and humanity were not exactly overachievers. You know, we, we kind of barely made it and it was kind of iffy for a bit, but we made it, we, you know, everyone listening, we, we did polarize service to others and we're moving into 4D. Now 4D and 3D, it's not, and Raw talks about this. This is not a switch one minute to the next. Mm -hmm. It 
bleed and it can take anywhere from 100 to 700 years. Uh -huh. so, and as we go through it, um, you'll be moving through it in, within your one lifetime, but you won't see it. The world will look much the same, but you will be polarizing. And yeah. so it's just, a, it's just an amazing time. Um, so many entities have come here to this planet, not only as wanderers, but everyone wants to kind of, this is, we're, we got front row tickets and everyone. Yeah. Just, this is a happy place. And that, that, that's what I always say is this is a happy place. And that, you know, all that have walked before us, that uh, all the non-physical angels, God, whatever, that they have a, an extreme interest in all of this. And, um, and so the changes that have happened in the world, Pamela, that um, can we look at that then, you know, from the riots, the reform to COVID, can we look at that as all part of this evolution and part of this awakening to service to others? Yes, and it, it does make sense when you look at the, the world uh, and the reason why we're in chaos is because well, first of all, let's let's talk a little bit about what service to others and service to self really means and its, uh, its definition. When okay. you're in 3D, uh, moving to 4D, when you're in service to self, we're really focused on yourself. Um, the decisions, you, the, all the decisions that you make are to um, elevate you and expand you. But when you go to service to others, it's like you can feel another person's emotions, what they and and what they're going through. Mm -hmm. so to yourself, and you see someone else going through hardship, you you would just be like, "Well, that's a shame. Uh, I'm going to go to work and make some money." But now, when you see um, someone else suffering or in pain, and your service mm -hmm. others, you feel their pain, so you want to help, and you can't help them, but you want to help. And I think that's what you're starting to see now. It's like, why are people like for black lives matter? And, you know, e you know, everyone wants to be equal. Um, yeah. People feel compelled to make a difference in this because they feel other people's suffering and injustice mm -hmm. and they, they can't help but want to get involved because it's impacting them, even though these are strangers and yeah. you kind of see how we're starting to like in, in 40, we're all going to start to just be more and more connected emotionally. It's not everyone for themselves anymore. And that's where we're going now. And you can kind of feel that. So you might think that, well, the world's in chaos and this is all bad. It's actually good because right. people are caring about each other. Now yeah. they're not against each other. It's all, it's, it's unifying. And we're going against the, um, the status quo of almost, you know, like the elitists are very much service to self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. beautiful. And is, and we're unifying to break that system apart. And it's all about moving uh, polarized service to others. Man, I, I just love that. I love it. And um, so I, I love your background on um, that you have a, uh, a talent, if you will, to take complex things and make them simple. And in fact, even with your mother that you've been very good at, at uh, helping your mother to simplify things to your mother so she can, you know, uh, understand this. And so wh what do you think that, like for us to, uh, as, as I'm hearing this, it's, um, it's to find out more about who you are. And so for every one of you out there to really understand more on, on who you are, uh, why you're here, uh, just more clarity. And like, for example, clarity to not be afraid of these changes in the world, but to bless them and realize they are blessings. And it's actually moving all of us, evolving all of us to a better place for us, for our children, for our grandchildren and, you know, children to be. And so with all of that, that what, what would you say, like, if I want to understand the law of one raw um, and to understand all this, that um, where would I start? Where would you suggest that we go to have this better understanding on why we're here and with this uh, uh, raw material? Well, um, the law of one is trying to convey the reason why they name the books the law of one is because everything comes from one. Um, you know, and we're starting to feel that we are just not only getting more connected as we're moving through these densities, but what it really means is that consciousness, 
Um, some people call it source. Some people call it, you know, source consciousness. Some people call it God. Some people have, can call it the matrix. You, you can yeah. call it many different things. Sure. But what is it? It's, it's a collective consciousness of everything. So yeah. the only thing that makes you or me or anything or aliens or whatever you want, this, this you know, this computer screen, like anything that you want to be different, it still comes from the same one consciousness, but it has been given a different perspective in order to expand to mm -hmm. make itself better. So if you think of it, um, the first consciousness, when consciousness first got created, the first consciousness, it didn't know anything. It didn't know itself. So mm -hmm. when it started to expand, it started to get perspective and started to expand more. And that's basically what we are. We are an expansion, like an arm coming out of the source energy. And mm -hmm. we are doing this in order to expand to know itself better. And you can't stop expansion. doesn't matter if it's good or bad or up or down. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's all good in order to expand because you know yourself better. Otherwise, you are you can't be a statue. You can't be stagnant, nothing. Right. So we're always expanding, it doesn't matter which way. So we um, are kind of at the very far reaches of the expansion. Not not the farthest, but yeah. us. We're in, we're in 3D. We're, we're getting that's out there. We're getting out there. And I, I yeah, love to go all the way up to like, you know, 12th dimensions. <laughs> the thing that makes where we are right now, where our place is in all of this consciousness mm -hmm. is... We're like I said, like the the fact that we're moving from 3D to 4D is so amazing because we are still under the veil. So you have to think of a consciousness like snaking in from source energy, from the highest dimensions, coming in and piercing this veil of forgetting. And that that veil was very important because yeah. it was the cause for the most amazing expansion so far. Yeah, right? it was really. Right ingenious to have a universe that was created out of the eons and millions of universes this one is under the law of attraction yeah. you're a veil of forgetting where we are right now anyway and um of free will which yeah. is such an amazing expansion that's why we kind of have the whole universe kind of watching us right now it's really yeah, that's great that's so, great. It's so now, if you think about how we are an extension of source and we snaked in, like say, spirit or soul. What you know, you can use yeah. the different words. Has snaked in and pierced this veil. Mm -hmm. um, think of 4D as just kind of piercing that veil, but just a little bit more yeah. um, in order to expand more. And then we're going to be more connected. Mm -hmm. you know, as we go into say, we're going to be here for I think us uh, quite a few million years in in 4D. <laughs> I do well then we'll start being connected even more where we won't even have to speak to each other because we will yeah. be able to uh psychically um yeah. speak to each other and that means we'll have the knowledge of you know every phd on the planet all at once and this is going to cause us to really expand and and solve some huge problems on our planet and other planets because it's going to be more collective when so when you say you're more attached and to source energy it's mm -hmm. just you have more knowledge of of, of access and understanding and unity and mm -hmm. so that's where we're heading so if you think that we're just behind this veil right now and yeah. we kind of go we pierce this veil veil we have this experience of expansion you know and you mm -hmm. need to have the duality you just like source it didn't know what light was until it, it didn't know darkness and light it had to know both right right so at first there was darkness i'm like well it didn't know what darkness not was right right first yeah and this is where this whole idea about like um you're just so right on on all of this and i just love your uh, perspective pamela because we we really this contrast this world is the perfect contrast of everything we don't want and everything we want and so we have to brush up against things that uh, we don't like so such as not enough money maybe bad health maybe a divorce you know whatever and what that does is that helps birth then the new ideas and the new thoughts and this idea about growth and one of the primary reasons we're here is for that growth and we're able to have that growth the other thing that i love is your perspective of this piercing and so 
when I and here are some helpful tips, everybody, on how to how do you pierce into or how do you allow God to come in or spirit or source to, to come in? And one of the ways that I'm able to uh, channel and channel basically on demand is uh, through my breath. And so for, uh, for me, breathing deeply five seconds in and then five seconds out, and then quieting my mind. And when I quiet my mind, then that allows source to come in and start giving me just this amazing energy that turns into thoughts that uh, makes my um, makes this life a paradise. And so it's all up to us to choose that. So um, uh, with that, other thoughts that you have, and I know you were on a roll and I just had to intervene there to kind of put it into the context that a lot of my audience understands on how I do, but your other thoughts on this, Pamela? Um, just that um, I would say the experience that we're all having here right now is one of many, you know, um, and in order to expand the way we want, it's like we choose the life and the experience that we want before we come here. And, you know, the first thing people might say, well, why would I choose to be, you know, birthed in this very poor, you know, docile place, like maybe at like a third world country where you're going to right. start at the age of five. You know, why would anyone choose that experience? It's just like, how do you know what abundance is until you know what poor is? How do you know what happiness is until you know sadness? How do you know? It's it, it's uh, from source's perspective. It's not expansion if it's all only paradise, paradise, paradise. Mm -hmm. You don't know what paradise really is. And so if you're here and you're going through a certain type of suffering and able to overcome it and able to understand your place in it is the cause for the immense expansion and that's the point yeah. so anyone who who suffers here it's it's in order to know the duality because we are all um our goal is to create and you can't create and co-create until you know what the duality of things are because um for the greatest creations mm -hmm. you can't just create nice it would be it would, it would peter out yeah um, to, into nothing if it was only that way but knowing the duality of it we're going to be able to be the most amazing co-creators um once we have so much experience here and expansion and yeah. that's really the point of why we're here yeah and i love that co-creator so it's just a beautiful word and that we co-create with you know source god whatever and it's this idea about we do the asking and then the father does the work, if you will, and we'll be able to, you know, provide all the answers and all the solutions we have. Now, the other thing that um, I, I love is that, you know, the, you're not a coach of this per se, as far as you don't charge anything, but what you've done is to really bless the world. And so you have a YouTube channel. And so you have videos up there that I'd like you to, you know, share a little about. And then you also have a way for uh, our audience to be able to communicate with you, ask questions, and you respond to those questions. So can you tell us a little about how we can? So I think one of the things that everybody could do, you mentioned um, it's audio. I know there are books on this, but do you have like what would be the best source for us right now as far as to get uh, an initial audio of the law of one and the raw material? What what would that be? Well, you can order the actual hard uh, covered books uh, online, or you can actually just read the transcripts of um, you know PDF files that they have. On the okay. website and it's all free or you can actually listen to the original audio but it, it's it's very methodical and they talk very slow so it takes you a while to get through it and um as for me like i like to write notes and things so i need to just i need to listen to it but the audio was so slow the original audio so i just have a computer um you know uh read it for me and i take notes and i can absorb and i can get downloads at the same time so that's awesome. why i started listening it listening to it that way and I'm like, I'm not the only one who wants to listen to it like this. Right. So that's why I started putting them um, on YouTube. Uh, oh, okay, the got it. So the best way we could do is just to go to your YouTube channel. Yeah. 
Awesome, awesome. So tell us how to do that and what's out there. Yeah, just go to uh, PamelaMace.com and I have playlists for each book. Um, and I started giving um, little intros and outros, trying to explain and tie it all together uh, because it doesn't always come that way in the books. Mm -hmm. And now I'm starting to do uh, intermissions for people to answer their questions that they're having as they're listening to the books to really tie uh, things in together because raw in the law of one um, always calls it, you know, uh, you know, the one infinite creator. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, cause I'm all about having a deep understanding of things because when you listen and get into the spiritual community, you can kind of hear the sound bites and you can kind of parrot things over and over again. But do you really have a good understanding of what of what's going on? And yeah. so that's kind of what I'm about, just not just hearing these words and not really knowing what they mean, but really being able to on your own grasp uh, what's going on well yeah. with wow. the body and other channeling work as well. And I get so I get downloads probably the same you know as you. I don't channel, yeah. Uh, yeah. but I get a lot of downloads. And um, when I'm just listening, and sometimes I go back on my own YouTube channel just to listen to the law of one recording because it's, it's, it's just ready to go right there. And yeah. so I listen to it and I get even, and it just, the, it doesn't stop. Like you, every time I listen to it, I get another nugget. Mm. And I, I just love how Dolores Cannon, she used to say um, things like uh, when a baby is born, you can't feed it a steak, you know, you need to <laughs> give it mother's milk and then, you know, pablum and then crushed peas. It's kind of like that. When you start this journey, you think, you know, you, you're so ready for all of it, but yeah. you know, uh, you'll only get a little bit at a time. And then, um, you know, as time goes on, you're, yeah, you're eating a steak. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love that analogy. So I'm, I'm slowly putting everything online and I'll have all the books online. And then um, there's also other channeling work that I found. It's okay. amazing how um, it doesn't matter sometimes where the channeling has come from. The topic is almost like a continuation, like you turn the page and continue mid-sentence. Yeah. Information is coming in. So yeah. I'm to just always put things online like that. And I will be starting a Patreon um, account because people have sometimes personal questions they want to ask me. Okay. And um, I might uh, like have like, you know, five minute recordings of me trying to answer some of their, some of okay. their. And where is that? How do I get to that? Um, I'll put that in the link of all my videos in my YouTube description. Oh, okay. Okay. My... Great. Great. So basically go to YouTube, Pamela Mace, your YouTube, again, everything's free. She's not selling anything, if you will. She's just blessing the world. And because she is uh, definitely one, one of those that is, um, is one of those wanderers, those light workers that is is uh, connected and wanting to in that next dimension, wanting to uh, help others and uh, connect with others. And it's not just about uh, us, but you know, it's about this connection because we all are connected and we're connected with love and this one source, and we all play a vital role to the entire universe. So each one of you are so important and so integral. Of, uh, required to be there to expand, um, uh, you know, God's mantra is more. And so to expand beyond where thought and emotions have ever been. And that uh, is definitely uh, Pamela Mace can, can help you with, with all of that. And uh, so again, Pamela Mace on YouTube, go there, PamelaMace.com can go there. And then she can also, um, and she's going to start a way to start answering uh, uh, questions that you have. So literally to be able to uh, serve others uh, the way that uh, Pamela has shared with us. And so with that, is there any uh, closing thoughts, comments that um, you think that this law of one uh, would, would be helpful for us to uh, understand and to get us a, a little bit more of a glimpse of uh, insight for why we're here and um, and the important role we play? Um, only th the only thing that we haven't really touched on um, that I think is really important is um, the fact that we're, we're, we're all extensions of source, but source has many different perspectives of the same one. And that includes uh, what you can call soulmates. Yeah. Um, the people that we meet, um, we're all 
we're all soulmates. You don't meet someone and it could be someone, your neighbor, or um, it doesn't have to be someone that you spend the, your entire life with mm -hmm. and soul contracts. You can call them. Is it, you know, that you have when you're in sources perspective before you have this experience mm -hmm. and so all the people that we meet um and come into our lives whether it's good or bad it's, it's there to help you achieve your goal that you wanted to set when you when you came here yeah. and uh, uh gives he's got a different he's almost he's got a personality that they're mm -hmm. channeling and he gave the um the best so far description actually because rob will always use the words that best describe what he's trying to get across in our english language mm -hmm. this channel works were done in english and he had the best uh description of when you're in sources perspectives like say you're in between lives you know you just been wrapped up one and you're going to go back in for another one um he says to look at it like you're watching the biggest poker tournament in the world. And you are, from Source's perspective, you know where everyone's sitting, you know what hand they're holding, you know how the deck is stacked, you know how things are about to kind of play out. And you you kind of go in with a whole group of people. It's like, oh, you're gonna be at this table. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll meet you later at this one. And you know, you know how that's gonna happen. And so groups of you kind of go in together to all help each other serve their goals while they're here but the problem is as soon as you get here you forget everything <laughs> you know, but you know we strategically placed ourselves um yeah. here to not not always have this utopian experience sometimes we're here to have a hard experience you know like you had you had the the easy one last time you were you know you were you were a billionaire last life you're, you're gonna be poor this life you're gonna yeah. and so you won't remember that while you're so I it's just such a good analogy of like um, the people that we have around us and the meanings of them and know that no one comes into your life unless you meant it. Yeah. yeah I think that we're starting to, I think, all understand, you know, some people come into your life to, to, to help you expand, not to teach you something, but to help you expand. Right. Right. Yeah. There really are no lessons. It's not teaching. It's it's uh, to to growth. And and really, an easy way that I uh, a term that I like using is we're here to create. And again, that creation, you know, it, uh, has that that growth and is able to uh, rely on that. So let's see. Um, uh, that yeah, it, uh, where where you're talking about other people that. Uh, and that's why everybody is a blessing. And so even, you know, Pamela's ex, if you will, is a blessing because, uh, man, he's the best guy in the world. He helped introduce you to uh, the law of one. And uh, and so when you can get to that point and where you bless everybody, that you will see that your whole life is a blessing. And so most of us are, are doing life kind of up and down, up and down, up and down. And this is a way to get up above that and like as Pamela was saying as when we reemerge back into this physical experience that we forget the good news is is that we can remember and if you just stay general and if you'll just allow this discussion that we've had together to uh, realize that there's you're way more than what you think you are and uh, you are divine creators and can create everything that you want and we're going into this beautiful new dimension of awareness and so it's all to be uh, blessed all these changes in the world and who you are and um, and so I love that and you know my what my my soul's passion that I have uh, discovered is to uh, both help myself and others to become our greatest possibility and so it is the service of others at the same time we have to start with us and for all of us to uh, start with us and that way we'll be capable to really to uh, bless the whole world and give that service and do you agree with that Pamela does that yes yeah okay good i just want to make sure all, I'm... all of this together um yeah i think you're like and especially your audience wants to know how to um like to manifest because we're learning now how to manifest things okay. and that kind of brings us into um um the fact that we can shape our reality is something that we're just learning now and like on a on any scale that we choose like a very large scale so mm -hmm. um and we can talk about vibrations and things like that now the thing that um 
I want to talk about and something I've learned even recently, like I've always been interested in the placebo effect. Uh -huh. It works. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think the medical and you know, you know, the medical community, it's got about two right. big things that they concentrate on. One, making money, yeah. and the other one is beating the placebo effect. Right. Right. <laughs> Local company now, so like it's about like what would you say like thirty percent placebo effect? Yeah, yeah, uh, and it kind of depends on what it is, but it kind of like gets in the way of those scientists. They go, oh darn, you know this placebo effect. Why did it do, do that? It's done unto us as we believe. So, so when you look at creating your own reality, it doesn't matter what you're creating, your success, your health. Um, it, it really, if you look at the placebo effect, um, it really gives you a better understanding when you're creating. Mm -hmm. um, because you know, like in like in in medical community, you know, you give the rats this, and it's like amazing, and then you give it to humans, and it just goes all out the window because of the placebo effect. Now, why is that? Yeah. And then even in the Law of One books, Carla, the one that was channeling, uh, mm -hmm. she was just an amazing channeler. She was able to really just allow, and she really was simple. She believed every everything that anyone said or or, or told her. Now, um, in the introduction to the book, she actually went to South America because I believe she had cysts on her ovaries and mm -hmm. she had what they called then, and this was in, I think, believe the 70s, mm -hmm. called it psychic surgery. Uh -huh. Now, of course, you know, later on, a, a couple of decades later, it doesn't really happen anymore because it was deemed a fraud so much of these, you know, um, doctors digging into the stomach and pulling things out and, you know, and everyone got angry because it was um, a fraud. I'm like, well, it was placebo effect that cured her because she truly believed and all the people that went to these people truly believed they were going to a miracle worker that was going to clear them. So there was no doubt in their mind. They right. travel to South America and they come back and they go to their doctor and they're cured of all cancers. Now, okay. so you talk about that type of placebo effect happening to the nth degree where it's like 60% cure. Well, cure. Yeah. But so cured it with their mind. Um, and there's even, you know, and you'll be able to look at some of the studies of people that even have um, multiple personalities. Well, one of their personalities has cancer and the other one does it. Mm -hmm. And when they go to their doctor and they do their scans, it depends which personality that they're in. How is it possible? So if you start to really understand the way um, we can control things and manifest anything, even our health and our bodies and our outside world uh, through, through our thought. Um, it's the most powerful thing that you can possibly imagine. So when you start to apply it to your life, the same way the placebo effect gets uh, applied to you, um, you can really just rid yourself of all diseases through your mind because it works with placebo, it'll work with anything. Oh. Uh, you've got to get yourself there. And of course, the question that people are going to ask, well, how, how do I believe that I don't have stage four cancer? What, what am I doing? Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's the, 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 the place that you get into. And that's kind of what we were talking a little bit about. That's where fasting comes in. Because mm -hmm. when you look at consciousness, you know, um, emotions and consciousness go into not just our being, but it'll go into every cell, every beam of light, every uh, a bit of gas, like in the air and the atmosphere, like consciousness is everywhere. So if we look at our bodies, as not just um, one consciousness, but an ecosystem of consciousness being put together yeah. um, uh, through different degrees. Um, and if we have say a cancer, well, that's like an emotion consciousness that went wrong in our bodies. So right. we need to purge it. And Rob talks about this and about fasting in the books. Mm -hmm. During the time where fasting really was not known mm -hmm. um, in any community. And Ra talked about it in the 80s through this uh, channeling work because yeah. fasting cannot just purge the cells that kick out all the cells that are disease and cancerous and hold yeah. on to the ones that um, are healthy and have good consciousness and your, you know, more purity in them. Mm -hmm. so there is that uh, very physical mechanisms that are going on where your healthy cells know how to shut down and hang on and almost go into a meditative state and just wait. And but the ones that are not are out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is amazing because I actually uh, intermittent fast, so every day I. Uh, eat, I have a window of eating, maybe five to eight, 
uh, at night and that's it. And the rest is just uh, water or just plain coffee. And um, I mean, it, it, some people do it for weight, but I've done it for, I have better mental clarity. I have better health. I have lost weight, but you know, I am healthier. And uh, you know, some people call me a walking miracle. About five years ago, I was uh, deemed permanently, I'm a Vietnam veteran and the VA said that I'm permanently in a horrific accident that totaled my car, totaled my body. The VA said, look, if you're paralyzed from your waist down, you will be permanently homebound, permanently disabled. And I just decided not to believe them. And I just knew that if I believed in myself and God and a higher power, my higher self, that I am whatever I focus my attention on. And so I would I focus my attention on just seeing me walk, et cetera. And one day I felt a little energy in my little toe. And then that energy I just focused on that and pretty soon it went up and around and my other leg and voila. You know, I'm I'm walking. And so they call me a walking miracle, but actually we all are but walking miracles, and Pamela can help you understand that consciousness uh, even more. And um, and so is intermittent fasting the best way? And again, we're just about out of time here, but uh, uh, or is it that you don't eat for three days? What have you found the most effective fasting to be? Um, I have done all types of fasting. Um, I also like I've always had like a, a fairly good diet. I've been vegetarian for over 10 years now and right. I've done intermittent fasting as a almost like a norm now to it's wow. very important to go at least 12 hours every day without eating. But yeah. um, you know the first fast that you do uh, of just a water fast or a juice fast, it can be, you know, you really are detoxing. Yeah. <laughs> but I do so much now, I actually don't get that nice high that you can get when you're fasting. Um, so it, it it obviously depends on where you are in your um, in your health. If you right. want to do maintenance, then once a quarter, you know, you can just do a, a five-day water fast, which is what okay. I do. Oh, okay. okay. Depending on where your health situation is, um, at the fifth day of a water fast is when things really start happening and some wow. real um, intense healing will start to happen in your body. I know that, um, you know, you have to, your body really has to go through the throes of, um, of panic before, you know, the good cells quiet down and start meditating and the, um, uh, you know, cells that really just don't know how to even function in this environment or get kicked out. And that happens wow. around the fifth day. Wow, so that's cycles a little bit if you really have some injuries, and it's not just that. Remember that each cell in your body can hold a certain emotion, so you get purged of emotion as well when you're going through a fast, and that's where the mental part of it comes in, where you know that you can heal yourself because the doubt and the fear of um, of where you are at and where you want to go, they, th those get purged as well. That's why the placebo effect can. You want to know how to create this. It's like, you, you, well, when you go five days with just water, your mental state is forced. It's like your, um, you know, your free hall pass of getting to the place where you need to be to really heal and really learn how to create anything in your life and in your body. And it yeah. happens when it happens when you can mm -hmm. bring emotional self out and keep that. Yeah. Now, this is exciting. <laughs> that is just fabulous. And so there you go. And uh, Pamela Mace, thank you so much for being on the show. We could literally invest hours on this that I know all of us have really enjoyed it. And go to Pamela Mace at YouTube that she has it all done in a simplified way, just like she did with her mama. And um, and could really help you and to understand that see this is why mind body and spirit are all connected and this idea you know we have been sold this bill of goods of eat you know you got to have breakfast and that's because uh, farmers and everybody you know with the cereals that they were promoting and saying you had to have three meals a day and it's just you know none of that is true so the placebo effect on your belief and then um uh, uh fasting and to be able to start fasting and if you tell yourself, oh, that's too hard, then it will be. But just tell yourself it's easy. If Pamela and I can do it, you can do it too. And so with that, Pamela, any last uh, bit of wisdom before we leave? Um, what I always like to tell people, uh, doesn't matter 
where you are in your life, in your journey, in your awakening, in especially the way the world is right now. And people can kind of get, uh, they get lost in the noise and in the chaos. And especially when they have to make big decisions in their life and they, they, they second guess themselves and they're trying to navigate life. Um, I always tell people that your most amazing guidance system that's on board that you came here with are your emotions. Uh, your emotions don't steer you wrong. Your thoughts can, but your emotions don't. Um, and if you trust your emotions to guide you, to make decisions, to know where your higher self and what your higher plan was, they talk to you through your emotions. So um, always, always use it. Always. Love that. Yes, indeed. The emotions that, and, and a great thing to write down on that then is that uh, I just want to feel good today. And if you ask for that, then your emotions will guide you and uh, lead you to all the things that you want to be, do, and have. With that, Pamela Mace, we thank you so much for being on the show today. You're just amazing. You guys know how to get a hold of Pamela now, and uh, you can ask questions and really get into this to really for those of you that are watching this that uh, you've been called here you attracted this to be able to understand more and now you have the resources with pamela and me to become your greatest possibility and with that um this is dr hank with health wealth and success and we thank you so much god bless you know that everything that you want is coming your way to include your awakening now and Pamela, thanks so much for being on the show. <laughs> Blessings to you. Bye-bye, everybody. Oh. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah. There? Okay, good. Yeah, sorry. I hit a wrong button that uh um so let me just see. I I think um let's do